Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to discuss about King's theory of goal attainment, which is part two video. In the part one video, we have discussed regarding the introduction to the theorist and mainly the conceptual system. The conceptual system, in detail, we have discussed what is the personal system, what is the interpersonal system, and what is social system according to Imogen M. King. In this video, we will be discussing regarding the theoretical model as such, that is the uh, King's theory of goal attainment, that model, the assumptions which was given by uh, King, proposition, meta paradigm, and a little bit about the analysis, that is the critic regarding King's theory. So, this definition, actually we have seen in the previous video also, okay. In uh, When we are going to discuss straightly uh, the theoretical model, uh, we understand that King's theory of goal attainment, how does King view nursing? According to King, nursing is a process of action, reaction and interaction by which a nurse and a client is going to share information about their perceptions in a nursing situation. So, let us take only the first part of this uh, definition. So, according to King, what is nursing? It is a process of action. So, we will be discussing this in detail in while we are going to explain, while I am going to explain the theoretical model. Okay. Now, what is uh, nursing? It is a process of action is there, reaction is there, interaction is there. And through these three things, what are we going to do? The nurse and the patient are going to share information about their perception in a nursing situation. Now, perception is something what we all have. King said that it is universal. A nurse has a perception regarding a patient. Same way, a patient also has a perception as uh, what is the role of a nurse or what should be done in this particular problem. So, during their action, during their reaction, during their interaction, both the nurse and the patient are going to share their perceptions regarding a nursing situation. Okay, a patient may feel that it is okay that dressing need not be done in the morning hours. A nurse may have a perception that dressing should get completed say before 10 o'clock. So, it is only during their interaction, both of them are going to share a perception related to a nursing situation. For example, performing a surgical dressing and then King said that it is a process of human interaction. So, it is not that uh, interaction is between an object and a nurse. No, it is a human interaction between a nurse and a patient or and a client whereby each perceives the other, each perceives the situation and through communication we are going to set goals we are going to explore the means and we are going to agree on to the means in order to achieve the goal. So, it is such a beautiful definition where King says that it is an interaction. It is a human interaction between two human beings. One is the nurse and the one is the patient. What are we going to do? Each person, that is the nurse and the patient, are going to perceive the other and the situation, that is the nurse is going to perceive what the patient is going to tell. The patient is going to understand or perceive what the nurse is going to perform through communication. What these both are going to do is they are going to set a goal, they are going to explore the means how to achieve the goal and they agree on how to achieve the goal. Best example is performing a surgical dressing where a patient is having pain in the morning and the patient doesn't want to do the dressing say till his pain is going to get subsided. The nurse had a feeling that okay the dressing has to be performed before 9 30. Okay but the patient during the time of interaction, the nurse is asking the patient, is it okay? Can we have the dressing procedure? Maybe the patient is telling that, no, at present I am having a moderate pain, okay? I want this pain to get subsided. Only then I want to get involved in this procedure of dressing. And then say both of them, this process is called as interaction, where the nurse is asking the patient, the patient is also trying to interact with the nurse. And once the nurse understands that it is the pain which is bothering him, the nurse may communicate 
a goal like for example she may say that okay let me check if you are you in severe pain that you need an analgesic and if the patient is telling i think i need it so the nurse checks the order and suppose if there is a pill which can be given okay if the if the order is in such a way that if the physician has written an order that okay it can be given sos then maybe the nurse is going to administer the the nurse is going to communicate to the patient that okay let us first uh, settle down your pain and once your pain gets settled then maybe we will start with the dressing procedure both of them are setting a goal that the pain should be subsided they are exploring the means okay there is an injection or there is a medicine so so there is a way how you can reduce the pain and then they agree on the means to achieve the goal okay so both of them are agreeing that okay an analgesic can be given and after that they can uh, go about with the dressing procedure see this is what is king giving importance to in nursing this is the core or the crux of the theory of interpersonal theory of goal attainment it is an interpersonal theory where there are two people sometimes even two or more people where what is happening here there is an action there is a reaction there is an interaction and with this interaction what is happening both of them are going to explore the perception of each other and once we understand the perception of each other we are going to set a goal we are going to find out what are the different ways by which this goal can be achieved and then we are going to accept on to a particular means how to achieve the goal so this is what is explained in king's theory of goal attainment and she also said that the human process of interaction is the basis for designing a model of transaction okay so in last video i told you that interaction and transactions are something two important words which king has identified see interaction is like um, a teacher comes and takes a class okay uh, she takes a class on say theories and that particular class our when somebody is observing you say that okay they are interacting but what is transaction is a series of interaction will end up with transaction like a series of interactions like continuous classes on a particular subject at the end what happens is the student gains a very good knowledge say related to physiology or related to anatomy that process is called as transaction it is not a single interaction it is a series of interaction whereby you find that there is an observable change maybe in the knowledge or maybe in the attitude or in the behavior so that observable change which is happening is called as transaction so what is this slide reminding us this slide tells that king said that the human process of interaction is the basis for designing a model of transaction and that depicted theoretical knowledge used by nurses in order to help individuals or the group in order to attain a goal so the nurse should use specialized knowledge the nurse should use theoretical knowledge where whenever she is interacting so when there is a series of interaction which is going to take place it becomes a transaction and with that transaction the goal of an individual or the goal of a particular group is going to be achieved so these are the two important things which we should understand when we try to study the interpersonal theory of goal attainment so i'm just repeating once for last nursing is a process of human interaction which is the interaction between two human beings maybe it is a nurse it is a patient and what are they going to do we are going to set the goal okay and how to achieve this goal we are going to agree on each other how we are going to attain that goal for that to take place there should be a series of process which is called as action there should be something called as reaction very very important interaction a series of interaction which is called as transaction and once there is transaction definitely you are going to attain the goal now when you attend say suppose if you have say 12 credits if you want if your uh, uh, university is demanding that you should have at least say 12 credits in order to appear for an exam once you have attained that 12 credits that is transaction okay because you have had a series of classes with your instructor and now you have entered into that stage called as transaction now there is an observable change in the knowledge 
there is an observable change in the behavior after attending that say 12 credits once you gain that 12 credits you are now ready to attain the goal okay you are allowed to write the exam so that is called as interaction process a theorist who has taught us so wonderfully so precisely what exactly happens what a nurse should be careful when she is interacting with the patient is summed up in this interpersonal theory of goal attainment now this is a theoretical model which uh, Imogen M. King has given us and she said that this model represents the process of interaction so this is a process of interaction see whenever we communicate with each other all these things are are happening within us all these things are happening with the person who is interacting with us according to Imogen M. King so what are they let us try to study this now we find that in this model we have two people one is the nurse another one is a patient maybe the client as uh, rightly put by King if one is a nurse another one is a client so two people are there now we understand that a nurse is having a perception she has a judgment same way a client also has a perception client also has judgment a nurse has a perception that okay maybe doing the dressing before 10 o'clock is said to be something very good okay maybe yesterday the dressing was done at this time so i want to do this dressing before 10 o'clock that is her perception and she has come to a conclusion that is judgment and here is a patient patient is perceiving that perceiving say moderate to severe pain that is his perception and his judgment is he is not going to participate in any other care of nursing uh, uh, procedures because he is suffering from severe pain that is his judgment he has come to a judgment no i am not ready to participate in the therapeutic care so that is his judgment so both of us the nurse and the patient are having their own perception they are having their own judgment. And then what did King say? King said that with this, we are going into action. The nurse is also starting an action. The patient is also starting with an action, which ends up with a reaction. And that leads to interaction. A series of interaction leads to transaction. And once that transaction is taking place then we have a feedback we have a feedback whether it worked or not so this is the model of interaction according to king so i understand perception is there judgment is there after judgment what we do is we enter into action maybe i'll say that i'll talk with the patient maybe i'll talk i'll tell the patient that okay why don't we do the dressing okay shall i uh, are you ready for a dressing okay the same way the patient is also showing a reaction no it's not possible okay so maybe there is an action from the nurse or maybe there is an action from the patient and for that action there is a reaction then both of them agree and they enter into something called as interaction where okay the nurse is going to uh, perform a injection of going to give an analgesic for the patient that becomes an interaction and then there is a series of interactions say for example she monitors the vital signs after giving the analgesic after 50, say 30 minutes she comes back again she is asking the patient how the pain is so series of interaction has ended up with transaction and now the goal whether the goal is attained, whether the pain was reduced, whether the dressing was done, that becomes the feedback. After transaction, maybe the pain is reduced, the patient has done the taken up the dressing say by 11 o'clock the patient has completed the dressing procedure with the nurse now that this transaction has happened and now there is a feedback for both the nurse as well as the patient. So maybe the nurse may take up a feedback like Oh, it was really good that I asked the patient like whether he was ready for a dressing. It was good that I did not take the patient straight to the dressing room or I did not take the trolley direct to the patient's room. Maybe that is what the nurse has a feedback. Oh, it was really good that I assessed his condition before even I initiated a dressing procedure. The patient also may have a feedback. Oh, it was really good of that nurse when I told that I had severe pain. Uh, like uh, she had considered that she gave 
gave me an analgesic and she waited, she monitored and only then she ended up with a dressing procedure. See, there is a feedback for all of us after every transaction or during every interaction and transaction. So this is what the king has summed up in this particular model, which is called as the process of interaction model. Okay, so here she has given in the base that there is action, reaction, interaction, transaction which will help in the attainment of goal. See the king though she has given so many words the main words which she has taken up in her theory is the last sentence action, reaction, interaction, transaction leading to goal attainment. I hope this is clear now we are just going to see what king has told about action. According to King, a sequence of behavior involving a mental and a physical activity. I want to stress that point. Action is not only what you show physically. It is also a mental action. Okay, you are getting prepared. Okay, should I tell the nurse that I am having pain? Or should I tell her that, okay, I, I don't want to do the dressing procedure? That is an action. It is a mental as well as physical activity. So, she made it very clear. Action is first mental. First, it is a mental action to recognize the presenting condition. Then, it is a physical kind of action to begin activities related to those conditions. So, King believed that action means it need not be always physical. First thing is, all of us, we have something like mental preparedness. We are assessing the condition and we are trying to tell out something. First, it is mental followed by it is a physical action. And again, she told that finally, mental action is again exerted in order to control the situation combined with physical action seeking to achieve goals. As students, I'll say that when you study King's theory, this model is very important. Okay, from exam point of view, if you're going to see, it's a very important question where they're going to ask you to write about the interpersonal theory of goal attainment. If you get a question, you have to draw that uh, picture, what we just studied, then you're going to write each word you're going to explain. So you're just going to say that action is a sequence of behavior, which can either be physical or it can be mental. First, it starts with mental activity, then once I am prepared, okay, I'll tell, I'll talk about this to my nurse. Then it is going to be a physical activity. And finally, a mental activity where it is telling where to control, how much to say, what to say, what to interact, etc. The second thing what King told in that picture is reaction. What is reaction? King has not specifically defined, but it can be considered as a sequence of behavior described in action. So, you know, like a ball comes and, uh, you know, there is a reaction from the dog here in this picture. Okay, so same way, when I, when I say something to a nurse, if I am a patient, if I am going to tell something to the nurse, there is an action. Now, what she is going to respond, okay, for that, I'll have to react. That becomes a reaction. So, King has not specifically defined reaction. She just told that it is a sequence of behavior which is described in action. It is a sequence. It follows after action. Next is interaction. So, this we have already uh, discussed in the last video. What is interaction? Uh, just because it comes in the theoretical model, briefly I will tell again what is interaction. It is an observable behavior. When a teacher takes a class, when a nurse is going to give a right tube feeding, when a nurse is going to check the vital signs, when she is going to communicate with the patient, when she is going to do a health teaching with the patient, you know, you just pass by and you just see, okay, nurse is giving a feeding. What I understand is what is happening there? Interaction. When I pass the classroom, I find that the teacher is taking a class. What is happening there? Interaction. Why do I say it is interaction? It is an observable behavior of two or more persons in mutual presence. Like when you find that, okay, when two people are talking to each other, when somebody is doing something to help other, another person, that process, according to King, is interaction. This may contain verbal communication. This may have non-verbal communication also. So, this in detail we have discussed in the previous video. So, that also comes in this theoretical model. See, I am making it very clear. In the first video, what I have discussed is the conceptual system. Conceptual system means it has personal, interpersonal, social. This class what I am taking is 
the exact interpersonal theory of goal attainment which means it concentrates on the interpersonal system okay so in interpersonal system we have action reaction now we studied interaction communication communication is a straightforward it doesn't need much explanation it is an exchange of information it contains both verbal and non verbal it can either be face to face exchange of information or it can be like this through electronic media or even through written words okay so this is so communication definitely will be there in the interpersonal theory of goal attainment next is transaction we have discussed a lot even in today's video transaction is a series of interaction a series of exchanges when the same teacher comes to the class uh, to complete say 10 hours or 12 hours okay that continuous process you say you don't say it is interaction you say it is transaction because it is a series of exchanges between human beings and the environment which also has observable behavior why do we do transaction in order to reach the goal why is a nurse giving feeding why is a nurse giving all the medicine she is monitoring the condition she makes sure that uh, all the needs of the patients are being met why she is doing all these things what is that process called as transaction the whole series of interactions which a nurse is giving to a patient say for four days of hospitalization together you call that as transaction according to king okay so that is transaction then role is there this is very important because this a uh, king has specified this concept in her assumptions and proposition role is we studied this in last class that is role is a set of expected behavior of those who occupy an identified position in a social system a patient has an expectations about what are all the roles of the nurses a nurse has an expectation how a patient should behave or what is the role of a patient a patient who is coming to the nursing station and trying to load an injection is not acceptable because a nurse has an expectation as what should be the role of a patient same way patient has an expectation about the nurse so that set of expected behavior is called as role so during an interpersonal process between these two people we have expectations about the role of the other person the set of expected behavior stress when that role expectation is not being met what can happen it can end up with stress what is stress stress is individual it is personal and subjective so this also in the last video we have covered the stress is like when a patient is trying to seek to keep equilibrium amidst the changing condition of the environment you call that as stress a person is unable to walk today maybe he had a fall yesterday he had ended up with a fracture he is unable to move okay so what happens is he is trying to seek to keep the equilibrium amidst the changing physical condition amidst the changing environment he was in his home till yesterday but today he is in a hospital so that can end up with stress okay so it is individual personal and subjective so this is what as students you should be able to understand and write in detail about interpersonal theory of goal attainment so once more shall we just tell what is interpersonal theory of goal attainment so here we saw this is the base okay so what should i write in the exam you will have to say that for an interpersonal theory of goal attainment to occur two people are necessary who are they one is the nurse and the one is the patient now according to king we understand that a nurse has a set of perceptions and that leads to judgment same way a patient also has a set of perceptions and he also has a judgment both of them with this judgment with their own judgment they end up with an action this action first is a mental action later it becomes a physical action okay so that is action followed by a reaction whenever i do something the next person will react okay and for that again i will have to react so there is something called as reaction which king has not defined properly but king said that reaction is a subsequence of action okay so that is action leads to reaction after reaction king said that there is something very important which is called as interaction what do you mean by interaction interaction is the time then 
that two people are going to exchange maybe there some observable behavior is being uh, we are able to observe certain behavior between the two people who are interacting they may have verbal communication or they may have non verbal communication when a series of interaction is going to take place king said that that is called as transaction because whenever there is a series of interaction then a person when two people are going to enter into transaction they are going to attain the goal okay and during all this process feedback will be taken like it usually occurs both for the nurse as well as the patient at the end of transaction so this is what we should remember in addition i have told you two more words one is role and the other one is trust what is role this nurse has an expectation about this patient's role same way patient has an expectation about the nurse's role okay so we all have a set of expected behaviors how society views the nurse what nurse is expecting from the society all these things are there okay so when that is not going to match up when uh, there is a changing environment when there is a changing condition maybe it is physical or the environment a patient can end up with stress okay and that stress the person tries to seek equilibrium amidst the stress that is the real attainment of goal for a patient now we are going to study about the propositions okay now i would like to say one or two things before even i uh, discuss about this proposition one thing is uh, if you are a postgraduate student listening to this video i would like to say that there are very few theorists who has given us a well defined assumption and a well defined propositions okay now we have studied over the last few days a lot of theories but in all these theories in some theories only in some theories you find that you have well defined propositions and well defined assumptions one among that i can say the best among all the theorists who has given a very good proposition and assumption who i personally love is imogen m king's theory okay and one more thing what i want to tell you is the second point is that these propositions are very easy to study they are very easy to study especially from an exam point of view a student once you understand the basic things about king's theory you will really love to study propositions of king's theory because it is such an easy proposition there are certain theorists who has given us propositions but it is a little bit very high level but king has made it so simple and i love her propositions so much okay so i'll tell you why i love that because it's you will you yourself you will find that it's such an easy thing to study so let us see what are the propositions given by king's theory before that what is proposition proposition is a statement which is going to tell us the relationship between two or more variables it is going to tell us the relationship okay it is going to tell us the relationship between two or more concept that is called as propositions okay now it is going it's a relationship statement let us see what it is see here the first proposition so easy if perceptual interaction accuracy is present in a nurse patient interaction then transaction will occur see the first thing what king has given the basis perception if perceptual interaction accuracy is present <clears throat> what do you mean by that the perception should get along the perception should get along between the nurse and between the patient let me put it in a very easy way let us take a teacher and a student's relationship the teacher has a great uh, maybe the teacher is really hard working the teacher plans a lot of things and the teacher has a thing that she has a feeling that she has to give the best to her students that is a perception of the teacher to give the best to the students and say the students are also having a perception that okay i have to get the best out of her okay in the sense like i have to absorb everything what she wants to convey to me now when both of their perceptual accuracy the teacher and the students perception is say accurate it gets along for sure miracles will happen because transaction definitely will happen now let me put this into uh, another scenario a teacher is found to have a great perception a perception to give the best to students but the student is not interested at all to do hard work the student is not so serious about her studies she is not submitting her assignments by time 
do you think a proper transaction will occur it will not occur because there is a delay in assignments the student is absent to the class frequent absenteeism not at all interested in that particular subject transaction will not occur now let us put this example in a clinical scenario a nurse and a patient a nurse who is having a very good sound knowledge a nurse who is very empathetic okay who wants to give the best care to her patient and a patient who is very receptive to all the care which is being given to him equally wants to improve his condition very fast and get discharged okay the patient and the nurse perception if that perceptual accuracy if it is there for sure king said that transaction will occur the best part which i love in king's proposition is everything starts with the letter if if this is present this will happen if this happens that will happen like that it goes so proposition the first proposition is if perceptual accuracy is present what will happen transaction will occur number 2 if the nurse and the patient are going to make transaction then goals will be achieved if regular classes are being attended by the student regularly classes are taken by the teacher for sure goal will be attained a nurse who is giving a wonderful care to the patient and the patient who is actively participating in his care for sure goal will be attained if transaction occurs goal will be attained the third one if goals are attained satisfaction will occur i think it is a very self explanatory point if goals are attained both of us have satisfaction the teacher the student the nurse the patient so if goals are attained satisfaction will occur easy proposition number 4 if goals are achieved effective nursing care will occur sure it is when the goals are attained what will happen is say one goal is attained then we keep second goal effective nursing care definitely will happen if goals are attained because that becomes a positive feedback both for the patient both for the nurse i'm sorry for the patient as well as for the nurse so what happens is there will be a stimulus for effective nursing care few more propositions are there so before that let us just summarize what is there in this slide what is being told here is number 1 the base for everything is perception if perceptual accuracy is present what will happen transaction will happen if transaction happens what will happen goal will be attained if goal is attained what will happen satisfaction will occur then what else will happen there is a very good effective nursing care will occur or happen okay now coming on to the fifth proposition if transactions are made in nurse patient interaction growth and development will be enhanced see how i really wonder how she has Um, she has been such a dedicated person committed person to this process of interaction model where she has tried to derive certain statements like this where she says if transaction occurs growth and development will be enhanced how whenever a series of interactions are happening we said that that is called as transaction say a nurse is giving a comprehensive care to a patient say she has given four days of care and today is her fifth day of care today also she is going to say give a uh, do a surgical dressing let us come back to the same example she is going to perform a dressing now there is growth and development both for the patient as well as for the nurse how the nurse would have grown in her skill the nurse would have grown in her efficiency of doing that surgical dressing a series of transactions what will happen is you grow it is not only that the nurse grows the patient also there is growth and development what growth and development is seen in the patient the patient is able to find that the wound is getting uh, that uh, infection has slightly reduced okay the wound edges are getting approximated okay there is no signs of infection there is a very good wound healing the patient starts to feel a lot better okay he is not feeling feverish he is not feeling tired the pain has reduced wow the growth and development has occurred because of transaction isn't that beautiful so whenever transaction happens there is growth and development 
not only for the nurse and the patient, even for a teacher and a student. A teacher becomes more efficient by taking the same classes or by adding on more information whenever she is taking a class. She becomes an efficient teacher. She becomes a master or an expert in that particular topic, what she is taking. And the student is also able to grow intellectually. She is able to grow uh, what is a in in the sense of knowledge, maybe in the sense of attitude, because of the transaction which has occurred with the teacher. So, if transactions are made, what will happen? Growth and development will be enhanced. If role expectations and role performance perceived by the nurse and the patient are congruent, she said, then the transaction will occur. This is a self-explanatory point. I have an expected role about my patient. The patient has an expected role about the nurse. If these both get along well, as per to the perception of the patient, if the nurse is doing everything, as per to the expectation of the nurse, a patient is participating in the care, for sure, transaction will occur. Role expectations and role performance provided if they are congruent, if they get along, then transaction will occur. So, I hope this propositions, you, you are able to understand these propositions. It's a very easy proposition. What happens when transaction occurs? Growth and development occurs. If role expectations are congruent, what happens? Transaction will occur. If role conflict, on the other hand, if role conflict is experienced either by the nurse or by the patient or by both of them, then what will happen? Definitely it is not transaction, it is going to be stress. When role conflict is experienced by either or both of the parties, what will happen? It ends up with stress. And the last point is most important. King believed that if a nurse with a special knowledge is going to communicate appropriate information to the patient, then there will be a mutual goal setting and goal attainment will occur. She said, a nurse with special knowledge, knowing how to get interacted, knowing how to communicate with the patient, say the patient is not ready to take up a, a undergo a specific procedure okay undergo a procedure maybe it is because of his ignorance but if a nurse with a special knowledge is going to communicate that appropriate information these are the benefits but these are the risks okay you are going to explain all the benefits you are going to explain the steps of procedure then what happens is most probably mutual goal setting and the goal attainment will occur. That is the proposition given by King. So, these are the eight propositions which are given by Imogen and King. Let us go through it for the last time. Very easy propositions, isn't it? Didn't you love it? Because it's such an easy proposition. The first one says that whenever that perceptual accuracy is there, what will happen? Transaction will occur. When transaction happens, what happens? Goal will be attained. If goal is attained, what will happen? Satisfaction is there. Growth and development is there. And if transactions are made, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, the effective nursing care will happen and then uh, growth and development will be there. If role expectations and role performance are going to get along well, what will happen? Transaction will happen. But instead of congruence, if there is a role conflict, what will happen? It will end up with stress. And But the last point is the most important one, what King is telling us. If a nurse with a specialized knowledge are going to have a proper exchange of information with the patient, she believed that goal attainment and goal setting, first goal setting and then goal attainment will definitely occur. Now, coming on to the assumptions according to Imogen M. King's theory. Now, King is a person who gave a lot of assumptions for her theory. See, if you're going to see the original work according to King, you will find that King has taken her, uh, she has uh, given assumptions for personal system, interpersonal system, and also for social system. But in this video and for exam point of view, what I'm going to teach you is the interpersonal system 
assumptions. How is assumptions different from proposition? Assumptions are what the theorist has believed to be true. The theorist believes that these statements are true for that particular theory. Proposition is a statement which is going to tell that if this happens, this can happen. You can test that by research. See, propositions are the base for research hypothesis. Okay. Assumptions are the statements which are believed to be true. So, assumptions, these are the statements which King believed is as true. So, even before we go on to that interpersonal assumptions, let us study what is the overall assumption what King had. She believed that the focus of nursing is human beings interacting with their environment leading to a state of health for those individuals where which has an ability to function in social role. So she believed that uh, what is the main role of nursing is to help the patients to lead to a state of optimum health thereby these people See, every goal of all nurses, I think, we all assume the same thing. We all have a feeling that why we are taking care of patients to help them to recover back to that health, isn't it? To leading to a state of health. What is a state of health? An ability to function in social role. So King believed that once a person is healthy, a person is able to meet all the social roles, maybe as a teacher, as a mother, as a nurse, as a uh, daughter, etc. You know, you are able to meet all the roles given in a society so you help a patient you help an individual to come to that state of health which whereby these individuals are having an ability to function in social role now let us study about the specific assumptions given by King for the interpersonal theory. And even before I am going to discuss this, I will tell you again, assumptions are very easy. You can understand all these statements. They are self-explanatory. But again, let me tell you that King's theory you have this is a very important theory, especially for postgraduate nursing students who are studying in India. Okay, now whenever you get for an exam, when you're studying King's theory, please make sure that you study everything because it is a very important question. So study about the uh, conceptual system, study that picture, the diagram very well, study the propositions, study the assumptions because assumptions King has given so many assumptions. So for sure, you can get in an exam. What are the assumptions according to King's theory? So what are the assumptions? She believed that perceptions of nurse, perception of the client influence the interaction process. So far we discussed about it. Even we do believe that the perception can affect the interaction. Then she said that goal, needs and values of nurse and client definitely it will influence the interaction process. If the goal of a nurse is not to give a good care to the patient, if the goal of a nurse is not at a very high level, okay, if the values of a nurse are very poor, suppose if she is not a very empathetic nurse, she is not a very skilled nurse, she is not having that compassion for the patient, then for sure it is going to influence the interaction process. So the goal, the value, the need of both the nurse and the patient, all they should get along, only then interaction will take place. So that is her assumption, goals, needs, values, influences the interaction process. She believed that human beings are open systems interacting with their environment constantly. I think now we understand that there are so many theorists who believe the same. I can tell you Roger. Roger believed that human being is an open system. Peplo believed that human being is an open system. Roy's adaptation. Roy believed that human being is an open system. Here we study King also says that human beings are open system who has the ability to interact with the environment constantly and individuals have a right to knowledge about themselves. Please be very clear. Whenever you are applying King's theory for a patient while giving patient care, King wants us to uh, remember that the patient who is sitting in front of me has a capacity for self-knowledge. He has his own body image. This person, we have studied all these things in the personal system. You remember in the conceptual system, personal system, we have studied about all these things. Perception, self, body image, it goes like that. Time, space, etc. Now, what King is telling us is, it is not that the nurse is deciding everything for the patient. That doesn't work in King's theory. For everything, the goals are to be set mutually. Mutual goal setting is something which King emphasized 
compared to all the other theorists okay so individuals have a right to knowledge about themselves which means king believes that the person who is sitting in front of me is a person who has the ability to think this person has an idea of whether he wants to undergo the procedure or not this person has the ability to judge this person has the ability to refuse a medicine refuse a treatment because she kept the patient in the same pedestal where she kept the nurse so it's not that you find that in certain theories like uh, henderson's theory abdullah's nursing theory florence nightingale's nursing theory in all these theories if you're going to see levin's theory if you're going to see everything is decided by the nurse the nurses will identify she will find out what are the components which is missing she will modify the environment she takes every, every steps to maintain the integrity of a person but here what king says is that no it is not only the nurse it is also with the patient both of them through interaction their perception should get along their goals and values should get along this patient has a right to have a self knowledge about themselves so you always give that respect to that patient when you are applying king's theory individuals have a right see there king has specified it individuals have a right to participate in decisions that influence their life their health and community service but i want to remind my viewers she never said individuals have a responsibility no individuals have a right patients have a right to participate in their decisions related to their health related to their life related to the community services that is why king always gave that importance of understanding the perception of the patient and then going into interaction and then ending up with transaction so you cannot completely decide everything for your patient if you are going to apply king's theory it is going to be mutual individuals have the right because they know about themselves they have the right to participate in their decisions which can influence their health health professionals have a responsibility she she put that word beautifully there because she said that individuals have a right and health professionals we are we have a responsibility to share the information which will help the individuals to make informed decisions about their health care like for example a patient is abruptly saying that i don't want to undergo say a bone marrow biopsy because it is i've heard it is painful i don't want to undergo bone marrow biopsy but there a nurse has a responsibility okay you are not to pressurize the patient but you have a responsibility to share the information related to bone marrow biopsy maybe what are the benefits of undergoing a bone marrow biopsy what are the real real comparatively high benefits compared to the small risk when a patient is undergoing a bone marrow biopsy and then the patient can decide but a nurse has to share the information that is where king said that a nurse with a specialized knowledge if she is going to exchange information definitely mutual goal setting and goal attainment will occur that is because of this health professionals have a responsibility to share informations which will help individuals to make informed decisions about their health care and then she also added a point individuals have a right they they have a right to either accept the care or to reject the health care but they have a right but i have a responsibility and then they can decide whether to accept or reject health care and the last she said the goal of health professionals and the goal of recipients of health care may be incongruent that is an assumption it is not that always it should get along always my perception his perception my goal his goal my needs his needs no she said there are she made it as an assumption goal of health professionals and goal of the recipients may be incongruent it can be sometimes it can be incongruent so that's all these are the assumptions according to uh, king's theory so it's such a wonderful theory where we find a theorist taking so much of care in order to explain propositions if 
then assumptions where she is trying to tell that perceptions plays an important role the goal needs and values plays an important role for interaction to take place she kept the human being at a very high level she said these people are open system they have a right these people they have knowledge about themselves these individuals who are sitting in front of me they have the right to know to participate in decisions whatever we take regarding their health and i have a responsibility to share the information but later on they have a right to decide whether to accept or whether to reject that health care and the goal of the health professional sometimes may be incongruent with the goal of the individual so that's it that is about the propositions that is about the assumptions that's all we have come to the end of the theory only thing what is left out is the strength the limitations and the meta paradigm now what is the strength of the theory what did you like about this theory what are the good things about the theory there are a lot of good things about this theory like personally i can tell you that this is one of the best theories where you can use it as an interaction theory for your patient in order to achieve the good this is one of the theories which has taught us that mutual goal setting is very important this is one of the theory which has told us that you have to assess the perception of each other even before you enter into interaction this theory has promised us that if there are a series of interaction ending up with transaction for sure the goal will be attained so there are a lot of positive things about this theory but among amidst all these things from the literature what are the three strengths number one the concepts are concretely defined and illustrated we find that king has taken time in order to define us a lot of concepts she has told us what is stress she told us what she told us what is interaction transaction action she told us about time space perception so she has defined it concretely and she has even illustrated it definitions are clear they are derived from the research literature that is the best part of it she has derived it from the research okay from empirical research and the concepts are easily understood so i hope that all of you love reading king's theory because the concepts are though many concepts are there lot of concepts are there but still the concepts are very clear at least the basic concepts are very clear i understand what is perception what is stress what is role what is interaction what is transaction and then coming on to the goal i think it is easily understood by all of us now coming on to the limitations or weakness of the theory always for every theorist there are certain critics uh, like which always say that this went well this did not go well so what did not go well in king's theory let us see limited application in nursing areas in which patients are unable to interact com competently with the nurse so king said that this theory is an interaction theory so uh, there were some critics who said that uh, like this theory cannot be used for patients who cannot interact with the nurse okay you know what king did i really love that uh, uh, determination of emojin and king because i find that she was a very uh, very uh, persistent person because you find in the uh, literature you find that king was a person who has revised her theory many times okay i think it's based on the critics she again she will revise her theory she said that uh, she said in julia b george textbook it is written very clearly that king has said that in for interaction to take place it is not only that a person has to interact has to communicate okay even a non verbal communication can be taken up as an interaction a non verbal communication and she also gave an example a patient who is in a stage of coma even the eye movements even the vital signs is an indicator of interaction so that is how king responded it okay so anyway uh, one thing is one critic is that we cannot use it uh, uh, in a person who is unable to interact but uh, that is a critic but still king has answered that non verbal communication is considered as a part of interaction then uh, another one critic is that uh, lack of development of applying the theory in providing nursing care to groups families and communities now uh, king usually whenever you find that in her proposition or in her assumptions she always used the words nurse patient she always said that the perception of a nurse perception of a patient so we find that uh, application of this theory to group as such if you are going to see nursing care to family nursing care to community in that aspect a little bit lag or i can say that 
there is a lack of development of the concepts how to apply this for a group and uh, she has concentrated more on uh, interaction in a dyadic relationship dyadic means dyad two people okay mostly we find it always she talks about nurse and patient but uh, though she has told uh, the next point social system in fact in the previous video we studied that personal interpersonal social system so she told social system is there and you remember there are where a uh, few concepts which we studied and the social system like authority power decision making okay so many things we studied like that but uh, how to use that authority how to use that organization how to use that power when a nurse is dealing with the community that concepts are not so clear okay so though she has specified about a system called a social system she identified a lot of concepts under social system fine that's great but how to use that in an interaction when a nurse is interacting with the society that has not been explained very clear so that is what the critics are telling it is less clearly connected and a multitude of views and a multitude of definition is confusing the reader see in today's video what we have studied is in detail about the basics that is a perception interaction reaction transaction goal attainment uh, but uh, in uh, last video if you are going to see for personal system there are a lot of concepts for interpersonal system lot of concepts for social system there are a lot of concepts so many concepts okay and she keeps on revising her uh, theory i told you that king was a person who often revised her theory so if you're going to see in the textbook you have a table which has been given like certain concepts she added in certain year certain concepts she removed it in uh, in the revised theory like for example she removed growth and development she told no more that concept is there so certain concept she used to add and then she used to re remove so uh, it's given in the textbook under the table uh, what to say with star these concepts are removed during this year these concepts were added during this year so so many concepts are there but uh, it's little bit confusing to the reader and some concepts how they are being applied to a community that is not being very clear but amidst all these limitations in her theory okay amidst all these small small weaknesses which is being pointed out in her theory i will definitely say that this person imogen m king has done a great contribution to nursing profession because she has identified the real concepts what happens within a personal system even before i enter into interaction king has made us to realize that every patient who is coming to you they are having their own perception they have their own growth and development they have their own perception of time perception of space perception of body image they have a knowledge about their own self it is such a human being whom i am going to give care okay and when i interact with this patient i should realize that whatever the patient is telling me during interaction it is because of a previous perception it may be because of a judgment action reaction now what he is expressing during this interaction but if a successful transaction take place this will end up with goal attainment such a beautiful theory and we have to respect her for the wonderful contribution she has given us for giving us a comprehensive knowledge about how really interaction takes place so that is about the analysis of the theorist it's a wonderful theory okay but small small limitations are there now we are going on to the meta paradigm so what is the meta paradigm for every theory what i am discussing in my videos only four what are they human being the human being or person health environment and nursing okay so now let us see who is a person or a human being even you need not read these slides now we have discussed so much i know who is a human being according to kim a human being is an open system is it not he is a social being this person has the ability to think rational and sentient this person has the ability to perceive think feel choose set goals this person has the ability to select the means to achieve the goals this person who is sitting in front of me as a patient has the ability to make decision so that is a human being according to king and she believed that there are three fundamental needs for any human being one is the need for health information 
okay that there that is a need they have to be given whenever it is needed need for health information number two need for care that seek to prevent illness teach them how to prevent illness or give them care in order to prevent illness like for example prevent food drop prevent contractures prevent a complication giving care in order to prevent an illness number three need for care when they are unable to help themselves so these are the three needs which king said that every one of us have we have the need for proper health information we have the need to be cared for so that illnesses are prevented we have the need to be cared for so that we whenever we are not able to help ourselves that is a our human being according to king so i think more than this we can write you can write in the exam human beings a person is an open system who has the ability to perceive this person has a mental action this person has a reaction is the is able to participate in a decision making has the right to know about what are all the factors which are influencing his health a b c d etc you can write so much about human being next is health what is health according to king king believed that health is dynamic life experiences of human being which implies this is health according to king continuous adjustment to stress or in the internal and the external environment through optimum use of one's resources to achieve the maximum potentials for daily living according to king a person who is paraplegic a person who is paraplegic and who is using wheelchair for ambulation if this person is able to take care of his needs take care of all his needs goes for a job earns a living maybe uh, what to say able to support himself or even his family she will say that this person is perfectly healthy why because according to king if a person is able to continuously adjust to the stressor which can take place either in the internal environment or in the external environment by using all our resources so that you are able to live the maximum potential of a daily living then you are considered to be healthy according to king so what is the key word continuous adjustment to stressor that is health what is the environment now one thing which i can tell about king's theory here is king has not specified anything about environment in her theory or in her concepts only in the meta paradigm she has discussed what is environment in her theory she has not specified what is environment but suddenly the previous slide we studied that she told internal environment and external environment continuous adjustment to stressors in internal and external is considered to be healthy but these words internal external all did not come inside the theory okay so what is internal environment she believe it transforms energy to enable a person to adjust to the continuous external so the energy which is there inside which helps me to adjust to the continuous changes in the external is internal environment external environment she believed is formal and informal organization and she believed that nurse is a part of patient's environment so all human interactions are taking place where it is in the environment but she has not specified such things in her concept okay but we understand that all interaction takes place in the environment there is something called as internal external nurse is also coming in the environment next is nursing nursing you can close your eyes and write the first slide what i have taught you it is a process of action reaction interaction nurse and the patient shares information okay both of them are perceiving each other through communication they set the goals they explore how to, what are all the ways to achieve the goals and they agree on means to achieve the goals so nursing that important definition what we studied in the first slide that is nursing and she said she put it very clear like what is the goal of a nurse to help the patient to maintain their health what is the domain of nurse domain she told everything promotion of health maintaining health restoring health caring for the sick caring for the injured caring for the dying so she believed in everywhere a nurse has a role to play starting from health promotion till care of a dying person she said that that is, these are the domains of nursing what is the function of a professional nurse to interpret information in order to 
plan, implement, and evaluate nursing care. So, like it's like a nursing process approach where you're going to interpret and then you're going to plan, implement, and evaluate the nursing care. So, these are the meta paradigms according to Imogen M. King's theory of goal attainment. So, it's very simple meta paradigm. How do you write? Students, you can make it very clear. Okay, you need not be so careful about writing each and everything what is being put up in the slide. But human beings, one thing basically what you should understand is they are open system. They have the equal right according to a nurse. Ability to think, ability to perceive, ability to uh, take a decision, ability to participate in the decision making process. Full thing is given for the patient. Patient has three needs. Then we studied environment, though not said anywhere in the concepts. Interaction takes place in the environment, to environment, internal, external. What is health? If you are able to overcome all the stress, in the environment, okay, by continuously, if you are able to adjust, you are able to live maximum with maximum potential for daily living, then you are considered to be healthy. What is nursing? Nursing is everything what we studied in the definition of the interpersonal theory of goal attainment. Goal of a nurse is to maintain health. Domain of a nurse is everywhere, starting from health promotion till care of ill, care of injured, care of a dying person. What is the function? Function is to interpret, to plan, implement, and evaluate nursing. Care. So, with that, we complete uh, this session, okay, where we have studied uh, what I have, uh, what we have discussed in this video is we have mainly discussed about the interpersonal theory of goal attainment, okay, if you get a question in the exam, say for 10 marks, I explain about the interpersonal theory of goal attainment. Interpersonal theory of goal attainment, you have to draw that picture, that nurse, patient, action, uh, before that, perception, judgment, action, reaction, interaction, transaction, feedback, okay? And under the base, what is the most important point is action, reaction, interaction, transaction, and goal attainment. That you will have to explain. Then you may have to talk about role. You will have to tell the importance of stress, okay? Then we studied the beautiful propositions according to King. The easiest proposition which says that if and then. For example, if perception gets along, well, transaction will happen. If transaction happens, goal will be attained. If goal is attained, like that it goes. Satisfaction will be there. The enhancement will be there. Growth and development will be there. Okay, the role, if it is role, uh, both the roles, expectation is going to get along, transaction will be there. But if they are not able to get along, stress will happen, etc. Then we studied the very easy assumptions given by King. Like she believed human being is an open system. She believed human being has the ability to uh, think. They have the ability to participate. It is the right of a uh, human being to participate. It is a responsibility of a nurse to tell all the information and then the patient will decide whether to participate, whether to accept care or to reject care, etc. So those were the assumptions. Then we studied about the analysis of King's theory, the strength and the weakness. A lot of strengths are there. Many concepts are there. Concepts are so concretely defined. It's, it's easy to understand. But there are certain limitations. Weaknesses are there. Many concepts are there. So sometimes it is confusing to read. The main uh, problem is she is not discussed about how nursing care has to be given to a group or a social system. Concentrated on a diet relationship dyadic relationship between nurse and the patient. But how the nurse and the society, she has not talked much about it. Then we discussed about the meta paradigm, so easy to write. Okay, the most important thing is you should remember environment has internal and external and nursing, you will have to write about the goal of a nurse, the domain of a nurse and the function of a uh, nurse. So I sincerely uh, hope and I pray that this video is going to be useful, uh, especially to all the uh, nursing students who are trying or making an attempt to understand uh, King's theory of goal attainment. Once again, I'm telling you this theory is very important from exam point of view. Please read, especially the theory, that picture, read the propositions, read the assumptions and the meta paradigm. So thank you all for your uh, great uh, support and for your great encouragement. Thank you.